Good morning. Pastor Jay here with your Wednesday devotion. I'm here in the Walker Cannon Memorial Chapel, and you see behind me the columbarium. I thought this might be a good backdrop for what we're going to talk about, because today we're going to talk about the will of God. Uh, that's one of the things, especially at the time of someone's passing, whether it was uh, after a long illness, whether they got to live a hundred years, or maybe uh, an accident or some other cause brought them down in the prime of their life. We, we wonder, that's the thing that really makes us question, uh, what is the will of God? Well, today we're going to continue on with the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to look at uh, Luther's explanation here in the small catechism. But I want us to think just for a moment about the petition we have today, which is, thy will be done. What is the will of God? One of those mysterious statements. Uh, we look in Romans chapter uh, 11, verse, verse 33. How unsearchable are God's judgments, how inscrutable his ways. In other words, mysterious. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Well, there is one person who knew the mind of the Lord. There is one who knew everything about God. And that's Jesus, his very son. Um, so for me, in my faith, when I think about what is the will of God, I look at Jesus. And I see that Jesus, during his earthly life, was an enemy of death and disease and alienation. Um, Jesus constantly worked to restore people and forgive people and even to raise the dead. Uh, we know that God's will is life, and that's so important. Um, it helps us to, to stay positive and to, and to keep that hope that those loved ones uh, laid to rest behind me uh, will be raised up on the last day, as we will too. But let's take a look. Um, Thy will be done is our petition. Let's see what Martin Luther has to say about this. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's kind of good to know that uh, heaven is a place of compassion and love and peace. And we're praying for that in this world too. And Luther goes on, what is this or what does this mean? In fact, God's good and gracious will comes about without our prayer. But we ask in this prayer that it may also come about in and among us. We want God's will, that peace, that healing, that forgiveness to be happening inside of us and around us in the world. And it says, how does this come about? Whenever God breaks and hinders every evil scheme and plan, as our present in the will of the devil, the world, and our flesh, in other words, our humanity, that would not allow us to hallow God's name, remember, make it holy, and would prevent the coming of his kingdom, in other words, his rule of peace and goodness. And instead, whenever God strengthens us and keeps us steadfast in his word and in faith until the end of our lives, this is God's gracious and good will. Isn't that the truth? Uh, God wants to keep us in his word. He wants to keep us in his way. And at the end, we will be taken home to heaven with him. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks uh, for your good and gracious will that we see in Jesus Christ, a will for healing, for restoration, for peace. Lord, help us to uh, shine with your will in our lives today. Help us, Lord, to be a sign of, of your peace and reconciliation. We ask your blessing upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, have a great Wednesday.